What is going on YouTube? One only X-Ray here. Welcome to the channel. Today, I'm going to show you guys how to drive a manual. You're thinking, X-Ray, it's 2021. Everything's automatic. Why in the world would I want to learn a manual? Well, there might be instances where you need to drive a manual and here, well, guess what? Now you're going to know how to. We're going to go over some of the mechanics a little briefly. We're not going to go too heavily into it. I actually have an awesome video you guys can follow on the link below. Check it out. It'll go over the actual mechanical side of a manual transmission. But really, I'm going to talk about the feel, what you notice, what you kind of need to pay attention to. So come on, let's check this out. So before you can even start driving a manual, you got to know how to sit. And you're like, x -Man, I know how to get in a car instead of a seat. Yeah, when it comes to a manual, you want to make sure that there are certain things that you pay attention to. One of those things is your leg. See how I have a nice bend here? When you push the clutch in, you don't want the leg to be completely straight and locked out because you're going to get clutches that are harder to push in than others. You're going to want to have your hips behind you so that way you can actually push into the pedal. So like you see here, my knee is still bent. That means my seating position is proper. The next thing you want to think about is how your arm rests in relation with the shifter here. So what the big thing you want to think about is you don't want to be weird, weird high like this. You don't want it to be kind of tucked in. You want it to be nice and in line with your shifter here because it makes it so much easier to go through all the motions. You know what I'm saying? It's very easy to move your wrists. It's not a full arm thing with a car like this. You know, bigger trucks, yeah, you're obviously gonna have a lot more movement and that's something you gotta think about. Alrighty, so as we can see here, we got three pedals, gas, brake, which you know, but here we go, that's the clutch. Now with the clutch, this isn't a foot rest. Don't leave your foot here. Put it over here. This stop, this stomp pad right here is perfect for a manual because it gets your foot off the clutch. Now, before we start driving this manual transmission, let's kind of think about what sort of mechanics are actually in this transmission. Now, first off, you have a shifter, and then you have a clutch that you also have to push this down here, and like so. And what these two things do are select the proper gear for your road speed, and what the clutch does is it actually disengages from the motor the driveline stuff. So your clutch is your engagement and disengagement from the power that's going to be trans back to your wheels and your shifter right here is what actually changes to match your road speed you look at an automatic it'll all go from first second third fourth fifth sixth whatever for you on a manual you have to do that and what the shifter does is slide over as you see in this video those rings the synchro rings and it lines up with the gear one thing you always want to make sure to do when you get into a manual car is check to make sure that this is in neutral and how you do that is one you want to put your foot on the brake because Say it's in gear for a reason, like it doesn't want to roll, the parking brake's no good. If you take it out of gear and put it in neutral, the car's gonna start rolling. So put your foot on the brake. Second, you look at the pattern that you got here, right? You look at that pattern and see if it's kind of in one of the directions of the gears. And it's really simple. Without the car on, you can actually just go like this. And now you're in neutral. Give it this little wiggle, because if you can go side to side, that means it's tracking along this empty path here. That's what you want to do before you start it. Next thing you do, push the clutch all the way in. Now I'm going to talk about a little bit while you're driving, why you don't necessarily need to push it all the way in. But for right now, to start the car, always push the clutch all the way in. And then obviously, start button. And she's alive. <laughs> so let's get ready to drive here. Clutch in, foot on the brake, put it in the first gear. One really good key point to learning a manual is understanding and feeling the clutch out. So we're in first gear. What I want to do is slowly let the clutch out and you'll see the RPM drop. Now when that RPM starts to drop, you can tell the clutch is starting to bite. All right, so let's go. Clutch starts to go. You start to feel it dip. Now you start to give it a little bit of gas. And then you're on your way. Slowly let the clutch out and off we go. Very simple. The biggest thing about a manual transition car is the feel you have to have with the clutch. Now, a lot of people want to balance the gas and clutch theory, and while that does make sense, and honestly, if you can get a good feel for when the clutch starts to bite and start to grab hold and you start to feel the engine go, that's when you know the gas can be applied. The problem that people run into when they try to marry the gas to the clutch too much is this. And you're gonna hear these revs go and they're gonna freak out and dump the clutch. Don't do that. The revs come high, just set them back down a little bit. Leave the clutch pushed in. What you don't wanna do is have high revs and your clutch in between being engaged and disengaged. That's how that wonderful smell of burnt clutch comes up. 
you're either on the clutch or off of it. Once you shift gears and you're done shifting, take your foot off the clutch. Same thing, don't let your hand on the stick shift like this or the manual. It's gonna actually bend the rods that connect into the mechanism that shifts everything. You don't want that to happen either. A lot of people will go around turn, hold on to this. Very bad, this is not meant to be as a stabilizer. That's what this guy's for. You want this, shift it, let go. All right, so let's try that again. First gear, clutch in, foot on the brake. Foot off the brake, release the clutch a little bit, feel that bog down, and then give it some gas. Beautiful. Now what happens when you don't have enough gas? Let's, let's let this go. We're gonna start slowing down. We're gonna start bogging down. You feel that. You feel there's a, there's a little jolt and it starts to bog. What people freak out about is they wanna give too much gas then. Really, when you start bogging down that slow, that means you're going very slowly. And usually, you're coming to a stop anyway, so just push the clutch in, that bog goes away, and you're fine. Now, once you've mastered launching from first gear from a stop on, let's talk about going from first to second, because once you go first to second, second to third, fourth, fifth, sixth, it's pretty much the same. But what you need to remember is a lot of people will tell you to push the clutch all the way in, now, when you shift from first to second and subsequent gears, you really don't need to do that. That's what the whole point of finding that mesh point where the clutch starts to go, is here's first to second. Clutch was not all the way pushed in because it didn't need to be. So again, you're going from the stop, first gear, accelerate, second gear, not all the way in, and go. Now, <laughs> what my car just did to me just then, a lot of newer ones do this to save gas is they put you from first to fourth. So one more time, there's a start, first gear, take off, second gear, not clutching all the way in, and go. Beautiful and smooth, really nice. The reason why I'm telling you not to push the clutch all the way in is because what people find, especially with the higher horsepower rear wheel drive cars, first gear gets you off the line, second gear is where all the torque's at. So if you, you do this, you spin out, you know? That's why people call and have these little accidents when you see them leave a stoplight. First gear is straight as an arrow. Then all of a sudden, second gear, oh God, they're all over the place. That's because second gear in a lot of cars is where a lot of the torque happens because you have your different size gearing. You have a larger gear driven by a smaller one to produce more torque. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed this video. I kind of ran out of freaking daylight. If you have any questions, please leave a comment down below. I'd be glad to answer it. If you'd like me to go more in depth about driving a manual transmission, I'd love to. There's so many more aspects to go over. This is just the basics of it, all right? So with that, you all have a good one. I'm out.